Hi everyone, this is a video about a major flare from nasal spray. Um, just before I jump into the crux of the video, if you don't mind taking a quick moment to like or share or subscribe or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. And as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. Um, so someone posted a question, or I guess, well, comment really, um, on um, one of my other videos. I posted a video a little while ago about uh, my understanding of what the optimal way to administer a nasal spray looks like. Um, so please check out that video if you're interested in learning about that. Um, but uh, unfortunately, someone's not feeling well here, so I'm just going to read out the, the comment. So it says, I have been doing this, so using a nasal spray for two weeks now, and I have extreme die off. I was spraying for four weeks prior to this with no hercs. Um, now I've been throwing up for days and can't keep any food down. I haven't left the house. I have extreme stomach pain. I'm using EDTA slash silver with mucolox. Um, I reduced my sprays and still can't take it. Um, it's working, but I'm losing weight. I want to kill this thing. I don't know what to do. Um, so uh, again, I can't give any advice over social media. Um, I did reply to the comment saying, you know, please talk to your healthcare provider to get some advice because it sounds really, really unpleasant. I'm sorry to hear that this is happening because that yeah, just, just sounds really, really awful. It's a long time to be suffering to say the least. Even one day of that sounds awful, let alone two weeks. Um, so uh, I did say in the comment that I would post a video about this topic. Um, again, can't give any direct advice, but uh, I can maybe speak a little bit around this topic, which will hopefully be useful in some way, shape or form. Um, so I, I've, I've mentioned this in other videos in the past. Um, yeah, I think some of them are entitled about herxes or, or whatnot. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, please feel free to cross-reference those videos if you'd like. Um, but generally speaking, especially when uh, my patients are using biofilm disruptors, whether it's a nasal spray or oral biofilm disruptors going after gut biofilms or systemic biofilms from Lyme or co-infections or what have you, um, I'm always really, really cautious with those because they can really pack a punch. Um, sometimes patients will be using their biofilm disruptor for, you know, days or weeks before, and they're doing just fine. And then like the floodgates open and they start feeling really, really crummy. What's happening there? Well, sometimes biofilms are really, really thick and tenacious. And so as we're using our sprays or our capsules or whatnot, it's gradually thinning down that layer of biofilm. But to my understanding, biofilms aren't just like a, you know, a solid shield. They're more like kind of a, a honeycomb type setup where uh, there, there's different layers to them. So as you're, you know, peeling back the layer, like shrinking the biofilm down, there can be little blooms of infection, or, you know, mold, SIBO, whatever it is coming out into the open, yeast, you know, whatever it happens to be coming out to the open and getting released. And if we don't have adequate antimicrobial support in place, or even if we have comprehensive antimicrobial support in place, sometimes the body just can't deal with the amount of critters that are coming out of hiding. We have a major die-off reaction and we can feel really crummy. And sometimes that's very transient and it goes away pretty quickly. And sometimes it just gets worse and worse or it just stays bad until the person finally you know, stops taking their biofilm disruptor. Um, that can also happen with non-biofilm disrupting treatments as well, uh, or very mildly acting biofilm disrupting treatments like essential oil nasal sprays. It's a weak, you know, phase one biofilm disruptor, um, but does disrupt biofilms nonetheless. But sometimes if we're just using a nasal spray at too high of a concentration too quickly, it could also lead to a similar type of presentation. If we're just killing off microbes too quickly, we get this inflammatory response from that and could feel really, the person could feel really crummy. So seeing a delayed flare up from a biofilm disruptor, not uncommon at all. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's, well, it's not super, super common, but it, it's certainly not like an unheard of thing. It's a very logical thing that happens. I've seen it happen many times. Um, and then in terms of, you know, what do we do when we're flaring from biofilm disruptor? Well, um, there's different approaches out there, um, but just thinking about, well, if I am breaking down the hiding places and too many critters are coming out into the open and I'm just feeling really crummy from that, um, sometimes we need to back off on the nasal spray uh, or the biofilm disruptor, whatever form it happens to be in, and then just let the body mop up the damage. Or what I usually recommend to my patients is that they switch from their biofilm disrupting nasal spray to just a killing nasal spray. So for my patients, I usually recommend that like I have in my, my little write-up that I send off to them, you know, start on this nasal spray, this biofilm disrupting nasal spray. But if you start feeling crummy for any reason at all, switch over to your killing nasal spray so we can fumigate whatever's coming out into the open and then go back to shrinking the biofilms down again. 
So um, I hope that you, uh, to the person who uh, submitted this uh, comment, I hope you're feeling better soon. Uh, sounds really awful. I hope you're, you're back to baseline lickety split. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments on this topic, please post in the comment section below. And I and if you have any questions about anything else or comments about anything else, really, I mean, try to keep it to complex chronic illness if you could, uh, or, or, you know, things related to health in general. If you're like, oh, by the way, it has nothing to do with complex chronic illness, but man, if you heard about this really cool thing, anything health related, please uh, feel free to post in the comment section below, and um, I will do my best to reply as soon as I can.